Whoa, hello. We are live today, people, and we've got some fun stuff that we're gonna put together. We are gonna be making some awesome poke, and we're gonna make a little sashimi plate, too, out of something fun that we have in today. That should be a good time. I've got some really beautiful ahi tuna here, absolutely gorgeous. Got some really nice steelhead, which we have on feature today, really also beautiful. Got some hamachi here, one of my favorites, really nice. And then, to top it all off, I've got something a little extra special, a little experiment I'm concocting here. So you can kind of see this. This is gonna be fun. We'll talk about this in a little bit, but this is gonna be great. So definitely pay attention, stay tuned to see what we're gonna do here. This is gonna be fun. But uh, yeah, we're gonna make some poke today. And to start with poke, we're gonna, we're gonna start with our fish. So what I've got here, again, is I've got my beautiful ahi tuna. I've got some really beautiful sashimi grade steelhead. And then I've got my hamachi. And I'm just gonna start by kind of cubing this all up. Pretty simply. Now, you wanna try to keep everything about the same shape. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut my tuna into sort of quarter inch planks here. Uh, and again, you can kind of cut them as thick or as thin as you want to. Just try to keep as consistently, uh, as consistent a shape as you can here. That's really all that matters. This is gonna make the final texture of everything really nice. It's gonna let those fish kind of all come together well. So again, I'm just gonna cut these into strips. Nothing super fancy here. Pretty straightforward. You can see just pretty thin little strips. And I'm gonna cut them into quarter inch cubes. And I think that's gonna give us a nice little, nice bite when we're getting our sushi. It'll allow us to get uh, a little bit of each fish per bite, which is nice, because we're gonna do a mixed poke. Uh, you could do this with any one of these fish, uh, and that would be totally fine. And it's gonna be really nice. So all we're gonna do is mix our fish together, and we're gonna build kind of a dressing around it. We're gonna hit it with some fresh herbs, and then I got some rice too that we're gonna serve this over. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add this to my bowl here. Like so. I'm gonna do the same thing with my salmon, or in this case, steelhead. And I'm just gonna cut this into strips, like so. Again, about the same size as the tuna. Now I'm using mostly tuna here and just kind of accenting with some of these other fish. But again, you could make just a, a salmon forward bowl or a salmon only bowl. You could use just the hamachi as well. Um, but I'm using a little bit of all the different sashimi grade fish that we have just to mix it up a little, have a little fun, add a little color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slice these. Give them another little slice down the middle. Hamachi is a really beautiful fish for sushi and sashimi. Um, you frequently will see it on menus as yellowtail. Uh, it's one of my favorites. It goes very nicely uh, with a variety of fish as well as on its own. Uh, you'll frequently see it in kind of combination bowls, things like that. I'm gonna grab a little towel here. And sort of set some of these off the side. Just kind of wipe down my knife blade. And we're gonna get into some of the vegetables. So I'm gonna put my fish board kind of over here. Remember, if you have questions, feel free to ask. Oh, the experiment's gonna be fun. We're gonna have a good time there. Uh, but what I'm going to start with is I've got my leftover green onions that I used yesterday. These are going to go nice in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and sort of rough chop these fairly finely. But again, it's going to just depend on your preference, how you want to do it. This will just add a little freshness and a little, little heat to it. Be really nice. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and put these in here. Also, got a little Fresno chili for a little more heat. Uh, you could omit this, you could use a jalapeno if you wanted, but I'm just gonna split it down the middle. I'm gonna do my best to just remove some of these seeds. 
and some of that pith that's inside there. That's where the really kind of hot stuff comes from. So if you clean out your pepper a little bit, um, it'll be a little less hot overall, which is kind of nice. Again, a little heat with sushi and sashimi is always kind of nice. Um, it just helps bring out some of the additional flavors in the fish. But again, you can absolutely omit that if you were so inclined. Completely up to you. So I've got my peppers cut and de-seeded. Now I'm just going to cut them into very thin strips. Because again, I don't want a lot here. Just enough to add a little bit of heat. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this a little mince. Like so. And I'm just going to use half this pepper. Again, if you wanted it hotter, you could use the whole thing. If you wanted to leave the seeds and ribs in, you certainly could do that as well. Again, you can kind of make it as hot or not hot as you want. Completely up to you. I'm going to use this later, so I'll come back to that. Uh, but what I'm going to do now, so I've got some basil. My basil is starting to turn on me just a little bit, so now is a great time to use it up, because why not? So I'm just going to kind of wad it together here and roll it into kind of a little cigar shape. We're going to do what's called a chiffonade. So I got it rolled kind of tightly like so, and I'm just going to cut it into thin strips. Now basil is the kind of herb, it's pretty delicate. So when you're cutting it, you only want to cut it once. You don't want to go ahead and cut it like this and then go and hack it up like you would other herbs. Just cut it into thin little strips like so and drop it right on in. And that's going to give some nice flavor. Um, some Thai basil would be fantastic in here. Uh, when it comes to poke, you can really put a lot of different things into it. Um, you could do some different fruits. Uh, in the summertime, when it starts to get warm, a little watermelon and tuna go really well together, actually. So you can give that a try. Uh, I've also got some cilantro here that I'm going to cut very gently. And then I'm just going to give it a chop. Again, cilantro can handle this. Whereas basil, if you did this, it would all turn black. And you don't necessarily want that. Again, my basil is starting to turn anyway, so it's not a huge deal. But, again, this is a great way to use up kind of some leftover veg and herbs that you've got in your refrigerator. All right, so oh, let's go ahead. I've got some cucumber too. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add some cucumber for a little texture. So I just cut these into planks like so. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut them into strips. This is what we would call kind of a long julienne. Then I'm going to flip and I'm going to cube. And again, this will just add a little texture, crunch. Again, some of that cool flavor since we've got those peppers in there something that's real, real nice. So I'm going to go ahead and add this. Fantastic. Now what we want to do is build kind of our dressing here. So I'm going to go ahead and give this kind of a quick toss, just get everything sort of working together a little bit, get all those fish sort of mingling, get those herbs in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dress it I've got a little rice wine vinegar. This is a seasoned rice wine vinegar that you use for sushi rice. We're going to use this again here in a little bit. I'm just going to give, I don't know, a tablespoon, half a tablespoon. And I'm going to use some fancy soy sauce here. We've got a smoked shoyu, which is really beautiful. Um, sometimes we carry the whiskey barrel shoyu as well, which is really nice. But this is going to add just a little bit of a smoky flavor here. Again, I'm going to do like a tablespoon or two here. You don't want to overdress this. This is really beautiful fish. You want to just give it kind of a nice little coating. It's beautiful. The shoyu is going to add some of that salt that we need. Uh, so it'll season our fish. So let's go ahead and do a little taste test, see how we're doing. That's perfect. So good, so fresh. So we've got this. Next thing what I want to do is talk about our rice, because I'm going to serve this over rice. Uh, this is the kind of thing you could serve as an appetizer, just sort of as it is, 
or you can serve it as a meal, which is what I'm gonna do. So here I've got some sushi rice that I made up just a little bit ago, and I'm gonna go ahead and season this with a few tablespoons of this seasoned rice wine vinegar. You don't want a lot, just enough to add a little bit of sweetness to the rice. You don't want it to taste like vinegar, just, just like we're making sushi. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just sort of toss this all here together. And basically you just wanna taste it, and when it gets to kind of how you like it, you're good. But if you add too much of the vinegar, you're gonna wind up basically with a soup. And you don't want that. All right, so my rice has been seasoned, my fish is all put together. I'm gonna go ahead and set this off to the side for a few minutes while we work on our next little experiment. So I'm gonna put my fish over here. I've got my bowl of water. Let's get my fish board back. So again, here's a bowl of water I've got, and I've got this. This is something really fun that we've got in today. We've had it a couple times over the last few weeks. What's up, Danny? How you doing? This is a, a New Zealand sea bream, otherwise known as Thai snapper. Um, this is something that you'll see served a lot of times as sashimi or on nigiri. Um, but what I've done is I've done a little quick cure on it. And what that's gonna do is pull out a little bit of the moisture uh, from the fish and hopefully firm up that flesh a little bit and give us kind of a nice texture. Uh, this is, I've never done this with a fish like this before, but you can see it's only been curing now for a little over half an hour and it's firmed up pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse off all this extra salt because we don't want it salty. We just want that firm texture. And you can really feel it. It's amazing how quick that acts. So I set this off to the side. And again, I'm just gonna rinse off all that salt because we're not looking for salty fish. We're just looking for a nice, firm flesh fish, which we are gonna cut into sashimi. So, now that it's all cut, we wanna dry it because we don't want it wet either. Again, we just went through and took out all the, a lot of the moisture from this fish here. And it's actually changed the color and made it a little bit more opaque looking, which is gorgeous. Um, it's just got this great sheen to it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut this into thin pieces. Wipe my knife down. Because you want a really nice clean blade when you're cutting sashimi. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife and hold it at almost a 45 degree angle and I'm gonna cut very thin slices. But I'm gonna start by taking this end piece off and cutting it like this, uh, curing it like this is gonna help you cut it a lot easier. Um, again, that fur, uh, flesh is firmed up quite a bit. So uh, again, it's gonna be a little bit easier to cut. It's gonna squash the fish less. The fish should tear a little bit less. But again, we get this just really beautiful texture and color. And you can see I'm using my hand just kind of as a guide here. And I'm just sort of cutting into the very thin little pieces. Okay, you don't want your sashimi super thick. So I'm just gonna cut. I'm also kind of cutting a little bit on the bias here. Just a little bit of an angle going kind of across the grain. And I'm using my hand as a guard. So you're keeping the fish in between the blade and your hand and go very, very slowly. Again, you don't want to cut yourself, but you want to try to get through that fish in one clean stroke, if at all possible. Got some kind of sinew in here. All right. Got some nice pieces working. Again, this is really gorgeous. And it helps to have a very sharp knife when doing this. This isn't the greatest knife for sashimi, obviously. This is kind of just a standard chef knife uh, that's taken a lot of abuse. Um, so we're gonna make it work. All right, so this will be our last piece here. So I've got my little plate. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and plate this up. 
you kind of arrange it however you want. You can take this a lot of different ways. I'm just going to sort of go in kind of a straight line across my plate. Perfect. So now we've got a really nice little plate of sashimi. And I'm gonna cut some few little garnishes for this. And you could do a lot of different things here again. But we're gonna keep it pretty simple. I'm gonna go back to my Fresno. And I'm gonna do exactly like I did before. Just cut a few little thin strips here. I'm just going to mince this down pretty finely. Again, we're just, especially with sashimi, we're really trying to highlight all of the beautiful aspects of this fish. So I'm just going to cut a few of these little red peppers, uh, Fresnos, and I'm just going to kind of sprinkle them over the top like so. This is going to add a little bit of color, a little bit of heat. Yeah, not a lot, just a little bit. And then we'll go back, let's do a little bit of our uh, cilantro here. And again, I'm not gonna use a lot, just a little bit. I'm gonna mince this down. I'm gonna mince this a little bit finer than I did for our poke. And we just want to kind of light coating over the top. We're not trying to add too much to this. So now let's go get some of this off to the side here. Now let's look to our cucumbers. Let's do a little cucumber garnish too for fun. Why not? So I'm going to cut this. And a, on the bias here, just into thin little ovals. I'm going to go ahead and stack these like so. And I'm going to just tuck it under the fish a little bit there. Just kind of fan them out a little. And do the same thing on the other side. Again, this is certainly not required, but you know, we're gonna make a pretty little sashimi plate since we've gone through all the effort here. Perfect. And just a few more little chilies on this end for fun. All right, so we've got a nice little sashimi plate right here. Now let's plate up our poke as well. We've got this. Now for the poke, what I'm gonna do is I got a little plate here. I'm gonna go to my rice. I'm gonna scoop some of my rice right into the middle of my plate. Because again, this is gonna be kind of our, our entree here, is what we're doing. You could do it right into a bowl with this, too, and just make like a poke bowl. And you can kind of do it however you want. Lots of leeway here. Spread this rice out a little bit. Cover my space. Perfect. Okay. So now let's go ahead, back to our fish, and let's Top this off. I'm going to use my bigger spoon. I put a few big spoonfuls of this on here. Yeah, so beautiful. So easy. This amount here would easily, you know, feed two people as an entree. Easily, easily, easily. 
just a little bit more. Be generous with it. You don't want to be be cheap here. All right. Got that. So we can go back to our cucumbers again. Let's do a few more of those little rounds for fun. Sort of tuck it in there. I've also got an avocado here. So let's go ahead and garnish with a little avocado too. Oof, that's a ripe one. Boom. Comes right on out. Let's grab a little spoon. And I'm just gonna sort of dig out a few little slices here. Put it right on top, like so. Oh yeah, a little extra ripe. Obviously, avocado and poke go very nice together. Perfect. A little bit more of the cilantro over the top. Perfect. So what we have now is a really beautiful poke plate. Let's show you here. Beautiful. Again, you could easily, this would easily serve two people or you could push it to three. Again, I like to be kind of generous with the poke. If this is gonna be the entree, you know, you want enough for people to feel satisfied. And then we've got our sea bream sashimi. Really nice, just a little chili on there. Cucumbers, the cured fish, really beautiful. So again, this is gonna make a really nice little plate. Uh, we've got all these things on feature right now. If you haven't seen, our giveaway this week is basically the fish that I used to make this. So we're giving away a half pound of tuna, half pound of our Aura King salmon, which is the creme de la creme of sashimi fish, and a quarter pound of the hamachi. So you can actually, if you win the giveaway, you can make this, have a beautiful little weekend poke platter. Absolutely beautiful. And I hope you do make it, and I hope you take pictures and show it off, because we love always seeing what you guys are doing. Super fun. Uh, Instagram, we get tagged all the time and kinds of stuff, but Facebook too, feel free to do that. Um, just really nice. Um, so many things you can do here, and I hope you do. And I hope you're all staying safe and having a good time, or as good a time as you can while staying indoors. Uh, remember, we are doing delivery and curbside pickup, so this is all available to you. Uh, yeah. But uh, again, make this. Make this, take pictures, show it off. We want to see. Otherwise, we will be back to you tomorrow with some more fun specials and things. We've got all kinds of stuff all the time. So thanks for tuning in, and we will see you tomorrow.